Hi, I'm Rebecca, and in this video I'm going to be talking about van der Weerden's theorem, which is a result in an area of maths called Ramsey theory. So Ramsey theory is an area of combinatorics, and it deals with the question, if you have enough disorder, can you always guarantee to find a small pocket of order somewhere within it? Let's start with a simple question. Suppose we have some red and some blue beads, and we thread them onto a string randomly, in a disordered manner. At some point we might start looking for patterns in the random array of beads. For example, can we guarantee to be able to find three beads in a row of the same colour? Well, not always, because we might just have a string of alternating colours, like this. What if we relax things to allow any three beads of the same colour evenly spaced, but not necessarily next to each other? For example, this red bead, this red bead, and this red bead. Can we always find three evenly spaced beads like this? With small numbers of beads, we clearly can't always do so. In this example, we only have three beads, and they're not all the same colour. In fact, playing around for a bit, we can find this sequence of eight beads where no three beads of the same colour are evenly spaced. So, is there a way to colour any arbitrarily long string of beads without there being three evenly spaced beads of the same colour? Or is there some large number w, such that whenever we have at least w beads, we can guarantee to find three of the same colour evenly spaced? Perhaps eight beads are still too few, but whenever we have 20 beads, for example, there will always be three that are evenly spaced the same colour. To study this question, let's introduce some terminology. An arithmetic progression is the kind of sequence you might have met in school when you were young, where the differences between consecutive terms are all the same. For our purposes, we'll consider arithmetic progressions with a finite number of terms, rather than ones which go on forever. If we have some beads on a string and we number them, then we'll say an arithmetic progression is monochromatic if the corresponding beads all have the same colour. For example, 4, 5, 6 is a blue monochromatic arithmetic progression. So is 2, 4, 6, 8. So we're interested in whether there is some large number of beads which guarantees that there will always be a monochromatic arithmetic progression of length 3. Let's look at the first five beads. Now I claim that there is definitely an arithmetic progression within the first five beads which is coloured either red, red, blue or blue, blue, red. Let's prove this. Now the first three beads can't all be the same, otherwise they would form a monochromatic arithmetic progression. So of the first three beads we must have either two red and one blue, or two blue and one red. To simplify things, let's suppose two red and one blue, as the argument works the same if we swap the roles of the two colours. Then there are three cases for these first three beads. If the first three beads are red, red, blue, then we're done. We've got a red, red, blue arithmetic progression. If the first three beads are red, blue, red, then the fifth bead has to be blue. Otherwise, one, three, five is a red monochromatic arithmetic progression. But now, one, three, five forms a red, red, blue arithmetic progression. So again, we're done. Finally, if the first three beads are blue, red, red, then the fourth bead has to be blue, to avoid 2, 3, 4 being monochromatic. This then makes 2, 3, 4 a red, red, blue progression. Now suppose we take 165 beads and break them up into 33 blocks of 5. Remember, we're trying to show that we run into problems if we try and build an arbitrarily long chain of beads with no monochromatic arithmetic progression of length 3. There are only 32 possible colourings of a block of 5 beads, since there are two choices for the first bead, two choices for the second bead, and so on. So since we have 33 blocks, there has to be a block which is repeated somewhere. Focus for a minute on the repeated block. If there are to be no monochromatic progressions of length 3, then by our earlier work, this repeated block must contain somewhere either a red-red-blue or a blue-blue-red arithmetic progression. Say red-red-blue for simplicity. Now, 
double the length of the chain to 66 blocks of 5, and consider the block of beads which is the same distance away from the second copy of the repeated block as the second copy is from the first copy. Look at the blue beads in each red-red-blue progression, and also the bead in the corresponding position in the third block. Together, these make up an arithmetic progression, so the corresponding bead in the third block can't be blue. But if it were red, then it would form an arithmetic progression with the first red bead in the red-red-blue progression from the first block, and the second red bead in the red-red-blue progression from the second block. So this bead cannot be red or blue. So we have proven that if we have 66 blocks of 5 beads, in other words, 330 beads, then it's impossible to avoid a monochromatic arithmetic progression of length 3. It turns out that actually just 9 beads is enough to guarantee a monochromatic progression of length 3, which can be verified by just checking all the possible cases. So our proof was really not the most efficient. But if we're only interested in the question of whether there is some upper limit on the length of the chain before we're forced into a monochromatic progression of length 3, and if we're not interested in exactly what the value of this upper limit is, then what we've done is okay, because we've shown that the upper limit does exist. And you can imagine asking a whole host of similar questions, which might not be so easily tackled using a brute force case check, but which can be tackled using the strategy that we've used. What about finding four evenly spaced beads of the same colour? Or five? Or what if we had more different colours of beads to play with? Van der Weerden's theorem tells us the answer. The theorem says, suppose you have beads in n different colours, and fix some number k. Then there's some large number w, such that whenever you put w of your beads on a string, it's impossible to avoid a monochromatic arithmetic progression of length k. So earlier we showed the case n equals 2 and k equals 3. And we showed that 330 is a possible value for w in this case. In actual fact, we know that 9 works just as well. How on earth would we go about proving van der Weerden's theorem for every possible value of n and k? For this, we need to take a step back and look at what we were really doing in our earlier proof. We found ourselves two arithmetic progressions of length 2, each coloured monochromatically in a different colour, and which had the same third term. Then whatever colour the bead corresponding to the third term was, it was forced to form a monochromatic progression of length 3 with either the red sequence or the blue sequence. So if we wanted to prove that we could always find four evenly spaced beads of the same colour using our red and blue beads, in other words, the case n equals 2, k equals 4, then we might instead try to find ourselves two arithmetic progressions of length 3, one coloured red and one coloured blue, and with the same fourth term. Or say we wanted to prove the case n equals 3, k equals 3. So now back to progressions of length 3, but this time with three different colours of beads, say red, blue and yellow. Well, in this case, we would try and find progressions of length 2 in each one of the three colours, all with the same third term. With this in mind, let's call a collection of arithmetic progressions within our wider chain of beads colour-focused if they all have the same length, they're all monochromatic, different progressions are different colours, and if we consider what the next bead in each sequence would be, then we get the same bead for each progression. So here we have an example of three colour focus progressions of length two. The red beads, the yellow beads and the blue beads all point to the same grey bead. And we call the bead shown in grey here the focus point of the colour focus progressions. Say we have n different colours of bead and we're trying to force a monochromatic progression of length k. If we have n colour focus progressions of length k minus 1, so one progression in each colour, then whatever colour the focus point is, it will have to agree with one of the colour focus progressions, and these will form a monochromatic progression of length k. In the example shown, if we only have three colours of bead to work with, then whatever colour we choose for the grey bead will create either a red progression of length 3, a blue progression of length 3, or a yellow progression of length 3. The idea of colour focusing can be used to prove the full theorem, 
but this needs a lot of steps, so we won't go through it here. Instead, to illustrate the idea in action, let's prove van der Weyden's theorem in the case n equals 3, k equals 3. In other words, we'll show that there exists some number w, such that whenever you have at least w beads on a string in three different colours, then there are always three evenly spaced beads of the same colour. And we'll do this by finding three colour focus progressions of length 2. Start off by considering seven beads. Of the first four beads, there must be two that are the same colour, and we can treat these as an arithmetic progression of length 2, and follow along to find the third term of the progression. However these first four beads are arranged, the third term will always be no further along than the seventh bead. Now take 3 to the 7 plus 1 blocks of 7 beads. There are only 3 to the 7 ways to colour a block of 7 beads in 3 colours, as there are 3 choices for the colour of the first bead, 3 choices for the second colour, and so on. So there must be 2 blocks of 7 beads somewhere with the same colouring. Let's look more closely at these blocks. We know each block of 7 contains an arithmetic progression of length 3, where the first two beads are the same colour, say, red. If the third bead is the same colour as the first two, then we have three evenly spaced beads of the same colour. So let's assume that the third bead is a different colour, say, blue. This is now looking a lot like the situation we had when we did the example with two colours earlier, and we can form two colour focus progressions if we double the length of the chain to include the focus point, as shown by the arrows on screen. We now have 2 times 3 to the 7 plus 1 blocks of 7 beads, which is 30,632 beads in total. And we're guaranteed that if we don't already have a monochromatic arithmetic progression of length 3, then we have somewhere 2 colour focus progressions of length 2. Remember, we were aiming to get 3 colour focus progressions of length 2, as this will force a monochromatic arithmetic progression of length 3. So we're going to have to repeat our argument, and here's where things start to get a bit crazy. We now put together blocks of 30,632 beads. Now there are 3 to the power of 30,632 possible colourings for a block of this size, so we'll take one more than that number of blocks, so that there must be two blocks with the same colouring somewhere. Again, look closer at the repeated block. Since each block has 30,632 beads, by the work we just did, if there is no monochromatic progression of length 3 anywhere, then each block must contain two colour focus progressions of length 2, say a red one and a blue one, together with their focus. Now if the focus is also red or blue, then we're done, because we've got a monochromatic progression of length 3. So we now only need to consider the case where the focus is yellow. Now apply the same trick as before. Double the length of the chain. Then the two yellow foci form an arithmetic progression of length 2. The first red bead from the red progression in the first block and the second red bead from the red progression in the second block also form an arithmetic progression of length 2. And the first blue bead from the blue progression in the first block and the second blue bead from the blue progression in the second block form an arithmetic progression of length 2. And these three progressions are colour focused. And now the focus point can't be red, blue or yellow without making a monochromatic arithmetic progression of length 3. So we've shown that when there's this incredible number of beads, 2 times 3 to the power of 30,632 plus 1 times 30,632, when there's this many beads, and when our beads are coloured in three colours, then there must always be a monochromatic arithmetic progression of length 3, which proves van der Weyden's theorem in the case n equals 3, k equals 3. The total number of beads we used in our proof is huge. If you were to write it out in full, you'd find that it's got over 14,000 digits, which is crazy. Especially because it turns out that in the case n equals 3, k equals 3, just 27 beads does the trick. This is a pattern with these kinds of colour focusing proofs, where they give these massive upper bounds on the length of the chain, which grow wildly with n and k, 
and bear basically no resemblance to the exact upper limits. It turns out that the question of finding the exact minimum number of beads, which forces you into a monochromatic progression, for a given value of n and a given value of k, is a really, really difficult question, and one which, except in a really small handful of cases, mathematicians just haven't been able to solve. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you had fun learning about van der Weyden's theorem, and want to learn more maths like this, you might like to explore the subject of Ramsey theory further. One of the most famous results in the area is Ramsey's theorem, which talks about colouring in the edges of graphs, and when you can guarantee to find groups of vertices where all the edges between them are the same colour. For example, a triangle all in one colour. If you're feeling really brave, you might like to try and prove van der Weyden's theorem in the case k equals 3 for every number of colours n. This can be done by induction if that's something you've seen before. But I'm going to say no more about this and leave it as a challenge. So feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. So that's it from me. Again, I hope you enjoyed and thank you very much for watching.